Greetings and salutations and welcome to Sioux Eagles Hockey on Hockey TV. My name is Scott Nason, broadcasting from Polar Stadium in the original Hockey Town USA, awaiting the start of our Northern Ontario Junior League Hockey Contest between the hometown Sioux Eagles and the visiting Sioux Thunderbirds. Our cameraman tonight is Rob Horn, and joined to my right, the wonderful, wonderful. tones of our <laughs> color commentator, Larry Pazabon. Paz. Wonderful, wonderful. You like the wonderful, wonderful tones? Yeah, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. That was a comedian used to say that. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, yeah. Thank you, you're, thank you. You're Good evening, yourself, folks. Larry. Uh, well, Larry, we are back here at Polar Stadium for the resumption of the border battle. And last, last time they played, there was a border battle. Yes, there were. Uh, a couple weeks ago, the two teams split a home-and-home -home series. The Thunderbirds won here on Friday night. The Sioux Eagles go over to the Rhodes, and they defeat the Thunderbirds on Saturday night. It's the same setup tonight, Larry, the Eagles and Thunderbirds. And the one thing that's changed, I think, from a couple weeks ago is the Thunderbirds have struggled a bit. Uh, they did win their last game against Espinola, but they lost Elliott Lake the night before that. They lost uh, two games that previous weekend, and so the standings have tightened they in have. the West Division. The Eagles are six points behind the Thunderbirds, and you only have a handful of games left. So the way I look at it, Larry, if the Eagles are going to get first place, this is almost a, 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 a something that they got to, if not sweep, get as many points as they can they have to now it's down to which which is good hockey for this division they got to get down to the crunch here because uh we look at Rayside Balfour they're making a move and and, and I tell you you lose a couple of games you're going to be in fourth fourth spot it's, that's just the way it goes so everything's important right now we're down to I think what would we have Le 11, uh, 11 games, games, games left, left yes. yes I'm gonna say so most of the teams have 11 I think there's a couple with uh 13 uh 48 or I can't remember now offhand, but, uh, yeah, there's we're down to the crunch anyways. Looking at the standings in the West Division, Larry, as I mentioned, the Thunderbirds in first place with 63 points. They played 45 games, the same amount as the Eagles. Rayside Balfour has moved up to second place, 62 points. They played 46 games, so they played one more than the Thunderbirds or the Eagles. And Blind River tied for second with Rayside Balfour with 62 points. They played three more games than the Thunderbirds and Eagles, and the Eagles are in fourth place, 57 points. So you look at 11 games to go, and you're taking on a team that's ahead of you. You know, nobody wants to be in that fourth place position, Larry, because that's that best of three series against Elliott Lake. We'll talk more about the playoffs uh, structure the only and thing, how it'll be set up. Yeah, the only thing that gives you, you get an extra uh, home gate. If, if there goes two game series in that, sure. if you're the fourth place team, if it goes three, you get two home gates. That's the only benefit out of that. And after this weekend series, the Eagles will have one more game remaining on the road at the Thunderbirds. Matter of fact, that's their regular season finale, I believe. The Eagles will also have two games at home here against Rayside Belfort. They'll have home and home with Blind River, a home and home with Elliott Lake, and a home and home with Espinola. And again, all division opponents, so Eagles with 11 games left, uh, you know, still have a lot of work to do if they want to get out of fourth place, but this is a team that's been playing well. We saw that last weekend with their big win over Espinola and, you know, taking on a Thunderbirds team that they know quite well. I mean, there's, there's no surprises what's going to happen tonight as far as what the Thunderbirds bring, and, you know, Eagles want to have their head up because we saw it get pretty chippy. One of the chippiest, if not the chippiest game here at the Polar last Friday. So you guys are going to have to be aware of that. Yeah, it wasn't a very, uh, inter unless you're unless you're here for penalties and fights, uh, th that that appeased to you that game. But uh, it wasn't a good skilled hockey game last, uh, last Friday that we were here. Or two Fridays ago, I think it was. Something like that anyways. Want to so. give some hellos out of the uh, gate here, Larry, as we had quite a few people come up yes. to the press box to uh, talk to us. Uh, let us know, Larry, who, who were some of the dignitaries here in, had, in, the, in the press box here before we had, the game? Uh, Brandon Blair. Uh, yes. Uh, no, uh, Byron Blair. Yes. Excuse me, By Byron Blair, father of uh, Brandon, number seven for the Eagles. And then we have the boys are back in town. We have uh, <laughs> Steve Orfanos. His uh, son is George. And he brought a couple of his buddies up. Uh, there's Larry, Jeff, and I think the new guy is Tom. Yes. We'll have to find a correction on that, though. But I believe it is Tom. Um, I'm trying to think of who else was up here now. I think that was it. That was as, it, As yeah. far as that. I want to say hello to Lonnie Teckle and the entire crew watching in Wausau, Wisconsin. He left me a voicemail earlier today. One of those busy days. I didn't have a chance to call back 
Lonnie, but wanted to say hello to him and his family watching back in Wisconsin. Hopefully you're not near that snow. I think it missed Wausau, but I could be mistaken. Now, if you want to contact us during the game, you can do so by going on Twitter and tweet me at snason, that's N-A-S-O-N 2013. Let us know what you think about the broadcast. Let us know what you think about the game, and let us know if you wanted to give any shout shout outs. I want to say hello to Daniel Clark. He says, let's go Eagles, Clarky Sr. in the puller. So Mr. Oh. Clark is here somewhere. So, again, we'll, we'll go through that more during the broadcast. Looking at the scratches tonight, uh, at least for the Sioux Thunderbirds, we have those. Number three, Jonathan Mackin. Number 11, Camden Finley. Number 15, Tristan Cicello. He's serving the first of a two-game suspension. Number 18, Cole McKay. Number 19, Avery Rebick. Number 25, Caden McDonald. Number 26, Cameron Baber. Number 27, Noah Solinger. And number one, Andrew Ushensky. Yeah, they're only dressing 18 players tonight, uh, Thunderbirds. For the Sioux Eagles, uh, players not dressed. We did have a late change, we think. We're not quite sure on it so number 10 George Fanos was a scratch but I believe he may be out there I thought I saw him in warm-ups we'll get to the clarifications on that once the game starts also out of the lineup we know at least at this point number 17 Owen Kipke number 22 Kobe Keller number 25 Jonathan Lacani and number one Ravi Khatri those are the players not dressed tonight starting in net for the Eagles tonight wearing number 29 Carter McPhail and starting for the Sioux Thunderbirds from Sioux Michigan Number 35, Brandon Gordon. Larry, the NLJHL announced their playoff format and timeline this week. As Well, it's the same format as last season. The top five teams in each of the NLJHL's east and west divisions will qualify for postseason play. Now, round one action will run from March 9th through the 14th and will feature the number four and number five seeded squads in each division competing in a best of three series with the respective winners moving on to take the top seed in the division semifinals. So if the playoffs started today, it would be the same as last year yeah. and the year before. The Sioux Eagles would take on Elliott Lake in a best two out of three. The winner at this point would take on the Sioux Thunderbirds. Round two will run from March 16th through the 28th and will feature four best of seven series, much like last year. So Number one seed in the East will take on the four or five winner. Number one in the West will take on the four or five winner in a best of seven series. And two versus three will also face each other. And from there, each division will face off in a pair of best of seven sets in the East and West Championship Series, March 30th through April 11th. Now the NLJHL's Copeland Cup McNamara Trophy Championship Series, also a best of seven affair, will be held from April 13th through the 25th. And the NLJHL champion will advance to this year's 2018 at Dudley Hewitt Cup. Central, Canada's Junior A Championship, which will be on May 1st through the 5th. And this year, hosted by Dryden, the Ice Ooh. Dogs of the Superior International Junior Hockey League. We're going north. That's right. And so the NLJHL winner will take on the Ice Dogs, who being the host will get in. Also the winner of the SIJHL and the winner of the OJHL. And from there, the winner of that, we're really going far, Larry. Yes, you are. As the national championship, the RBC Cup, will be held May 12th through the 20th in Chilliwack, British Columbia. Have oh, you ever been be there? Nice. That's nice. That's a long trip. That's a big trip. That, that's a big bus yeah. trip right there. So <laughs> that's your playoff you're format. You're not busing that way. No, you're not. You, yeah, you're, you're taking a couple days there. So that's, that's your playoff uh, structure. And, again, the Eagles are in the playoffs. We just don't know if uh, they will be playing that first series or not. And so a game like tonight can go a long way. If the Eagles can win, they'll be within four points of the Thunderbirds. That'll really bunch up the teams in the West Division. Yeah. Looking at the – go ahead, Larry. I was just going to say uh, uh, there have been a coaching change in Powassan. Uh, just recently, uh, Bo Moyer has been dismissed, and I'm not sure who's taken over the team. So we'll see how they continue to play if uh, if that help hurts our – or I could say it hinders them, or they can keep on winning. Powassan, which is first place in uh, the East. Right? Yeah, yeah, they are first and by a lot. Other games in the NLJHL tonight, Larry. Uh, only two other games. We'll definitely be watching the Blind River game. They play at Espanola, so wow. you would expect Blind River to get two points there as Espanola 144-1-1. And the other game sees 
Hearst taking on Kirkland Lake. Blind River has been there before. Yes, that same have. same, yes, same record, have. too. Yes, they have. <laughs> we got a couple uh, Twitter notifications. Larry, want to say hello to Linda Quinn. She says hello. Okay. All. Linda and Chris Quinn, Kyle's parents, watching the game in snowy Chicago. Go Sioux Eagles. Also want to say hello to the Lamb Birdie family. Steve-O from Auburn and California Schumburg Kings hockey alumni rooting for number 24, of course, Jake. And Lenny and Maria watching from warm and sunny Arizona. Oh, boy. So we had the Blairs come up from Florida. Yeah. We've had a lot of people traveling and, for this uh, weekend. What's the name, uh, Jeff, with, for what they are, Fanos Group? There, he's from Texas. Yeah, from Texas. So, a lot of geography being covered here, Larry. As we're not just, not like it used to. Remember, we used to have guys in Germany. Remember the Latvia, uh, Latvia, and uh, the the Coast Guard guys are oh yeah, were watching from Germany. Yeah, Remember, we had people from Puerto Rico all I think. around the yeah, world all around just the dying world. to listen to us. Again, if you want to tweet us during the broadcast, you can do so. <laughs> S Nason at two zero. One three. We're going to take a break here, Larry, on the pregame show as we are going to have the starting lineups announced by Bob St. Peter. We're also going to have a moment of silence before the game. A couple, three, three uh, moments well, of silences. Well, three uh, people that were involved in hockey here for a number of years with uh, the local hockey, the Eagles, the, the Indians, uh, go back a lot of years. And uh, somebody's actually, uh, one, one name I'm familiar with is uh, Jim Duquette. Yes. His son, uh, Bill, played for the Sioux Indians when Paul Terrio uh, took over that team many years ago. We also have the national anthem sung by Dan Kinney, and we'll have the start of tonight's NLJHL contest between the Sioux Eagles and Sioux Thunderbirds here on Hockey TV. So there you have it, Larry, the moment of silence for three individuals that unfortunately passed away this week that were heavily involved in Sioux St. Marie hockey. Also had the national anthems and the starting lineups and our officials, and we're ready to go, Larry, once we get some lights back on. Yeah, the main main lights. <laughs> Don't want to be playing in the dark. Some people say we broadcast in the uh, dark. Yes, that's true, too. Again, while we have a moment, let's give out all our shout-outs. want to say hello to those that have tweeted in. To the Quinn family there watching in Lights Chicago. On. Linda and Chris, Kyle's parents, watching in show, snowy Chicago. Also want to say hello to Maria, Lenny, and the Lamberti family, along with Steve-O from Auburn. And want to say hello to Daniel Clark, Stephen Urfanos. And crew. And we are underway here, Larry. The border battle has resumed. Eagles have the puck going left to right as seen on your radio dial. So it looks like number 20, Bobby Price, is the player not in the lineup. I did notice, Larry, that he skated off during warm-ups about halfway through. I'm wondering if maybe he re- I don't want to assume anything, but he looks like the player that's not in the lineup, so Stephen Arfanos is. Hey, he's playing Excuse me, that George line. Arfanos. Stephen Arfanos is enjoying a beer on the <laughs> sidelines here. Now the Thunderbirds have it. They won their last time here at Puller Stadium by the score of 4-1. to one. Puck goes behind the net. They're leading the Eagles by six points in the West Division. However, they're only a point ahead of second place, Blind River and Rayside Balfour. Nick Tackle had a poke checked away. Want to say hello to Lonnie and the entire Tackle family watching in Wausau, Wisconsin, along with the Barterson family. Now Whoa. a quick shot and a save there by Carter McPhail. Puck along the end boards. Thunderbirds with some early pressure. Now Tackle gets it over to Die Ball. Lamberti on the Eagles bench. Crowd still building here at Polar Stadium. Not quite as many as the last time these two teams played, but a pretty good crowd nevertheless. We'll talk more about that in the second period. Now Puck along the near boards in the Eagles zone. Tassone gets it back to the point. Quick pass to Hot for Lawrence to handle. Now cleared to center. Caruso with it. Braden Caruso. That's going to be offside as Ford was in way early and we'll have a faceoff outside the Eagles' blue line. Good start for the Thunderbirds. They had a quick change, so they had fresh guys going. The Eagles were trapped. They'd, they finally got their first line, or their starting line, off the ice. Minute and uh, 35 or 30 seconds. I think the last time these teams played, Larry, it took about six, seven minutes for any team to get a shot, and I think it took the Thunderbirds about 10 minutes, and they scored on their first shot. Faceoff outside the blue line, Jake Palmario. Will be replaced by Casey, who wins the faceoff. Now Blair's with it. His dad, Byron, here from Florida. A little bit of a different weather change for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Icing against the Eagles. Temperatures in the 70s in Fl- Florida, and we're just a little above zero today. But, hey, we had sunshine. Yes, we did. It we're not nice going to complain. I went for a walk today, this morning. I had to put on my sunglasses. I took my puppy for a walk before this broadcast. All right. 
Face off to the left of Carter McPhail. Eagles win another face off. Blair has it. He shovels it up to Paul Mario. Now Lamberti at center ice shoots it in. It's a very chippy affair. Last time these two teams were here, it took a while for that to happen. Nothing so far, but it's very early. Now Van Team with it across the blue line. Van Team tried to center it, goes behind the net. He catches up to the puck, back to the point. Fanning on the shot is King. He'll put it behind the net. Now Miller tried to line up Schwab. Thunderbirds with possession, now they lose it. Here's Saxon, Saxon on the right wing side, loses the puck. Puck at center ice, taken by the Thunderbirds. Van Team across the blue line, Van Team with it. Quick shot, save there McPhail with the blocker. Van Team gets the rebound. And That's the Eagles, a good save. Yeah. It was a screen shot. Eagles trying to clear the zone. No, stick gets knocked out of a player's hand. First shot on net there by Rowe, saved by Gordon, the Sioux Michigan native. We've seen him have impressive nights here at Polar Stadium. All year round, this guy's been playing good. Yeah, now Caruso gets knocked down, rather, Kalisti. Thunderbirds with it, Terrio at center ice. Off the stick of Acosta who chases in. Now Acosta behind the net. Both teams with good energy to start this one. You would expect nothing less between these two squads. Now here's Terrio, centers it. Broken up by the Eagles, and we're gonna have a face-off and a penalty, I believe, Larry. Uh, I missed that. I think it was the net was off, or yeah, that's all. I don't yeah, think there's a penalty. penalty on it. 17:05 to play in this first period. No score. Shots 2-1. Thunderbirds. These teams will play tomorrow night at the John Rhodes Community Center. Larry, you're going to be uh, I'm going. attending that. Oh yes. I have a tubing date. A tubing date. With my two boys there, we're going doing some night tubing. Uh, oh, I on thought you were going to play Hill. the tuba. No, no, no. <laughs> Downhill uh, sledding, I guess, is the yes, correct that's term. Yes, uh, that's a, it's a big thing over it here. It is, yeah. It's a lot, a lot of Canadians come over, too. I hear a lot of A's and poutine talk <laughs> in Trudeau. Now here's Capasiolto across the blue line. He loses the puck. Picked up by the Thunderbirds. Kalisti with some speed gets around Bear, Blair. Kalisti to Terrio shot. Save by McPhail. Now Blair behind the net. Blair with the puck. Plays it to Capasiolto. Now Terrio has it. Into his own zone. T-Birds have it. Got a story about the T-Birds last trip to Espinola and what happened on the way back. I don't know if you heard, Larry, no. but we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. Now here's the Thunderbirds with it. Caruso in his own zone. Now long pass up ice, Blair breaks that one up. Now here's Tassone, pass to Smith just out of his reach. Smith. You, gotta, you have to watch that guy, he loves to score that Yes Smith. he does, and he scored a lot this year. Lawrence at center ice, flips it in, bouncing puck. Still at center, finally taken by the Thunderbirds, Lawrence. Now Ford, Ford with it. Ford over to Caruso. Russo in his own zone. That one, look out. Coach Barco, uh, <laughs> give nice reflexes there to get out of the way, and we'll have a face-off with 15.37 to play in the first period. Okay, folks, when you're coming here to watch a game in the Polar Stadium, you'll enjoy yourself. The Eagles' nest is open. They have ice-cold beer, Chicago-style popcorn, warm pretzels, wine coolers, and a lot of sodas to drink. Face-off once again won by the Eagles. They're doing a good job here early on the draws. Now puck along the near boards. Taken by Caruso. Caruso behind the net for the T-Birds. Caruso plays it off the glass to Miller. Now Miller tried to get around Schwab. He does. Miller, former Sioux Indian. Played his midget hockey over here in Sioux, Michigan. Now the Thunderbirds, they've controlled the play so far. O'Franos, he'll just backhand the puck down the ice. No Look, icing. Looking for a line change, that's what it was. Now here's Caruso with it. Caruso's pass to... Maine, he'll deflect it in, Clark has it. Hayden Clark, pass, broken up by Robbins. He gets knocked down by Lamberti, now a shot by Terrio. Goes off the end boards, picked up by Clark. Clark with the puck, off the board, just over the stick of Palmario. Now King, he'll wrap it into the Eagles zone. Puck still at center ice, now chased in by King. King, his pass, off the Thunderbirds player's stick. Taken by Dieball at center ice. Now Casey near side. He'll shoot it in. King with the puck. Along the near board. Centering chance. Palmario shoots it wide. Now King up to Acosta. 
Koss is going to shoot that one down the ice. Clark has it. Picked up by Terrio. Now Terrio moves in a shot. And that one just goes high over the net. Picked up by Palmario at center ice for the Eagles. Palmario across the blue line. Palmario with the shot. That one misses. Goes over to Acosta who clears the zone. We played six minutes of this first period. No score. Now Palmario drops it for Blair. Back to Palmario. On the end board, Saxton. Back to the point, Blair. Now Blair winds and fires. That one hits the player in front. And a good chance there, but it didn't get through. Now here's Tassone at center ice. Picked up by Smith. Tassone gets it. Poke checked away by Saxton. Now Blair at center ice. Moves across the blue line. He's got Vitali over there as Kalisti hacks him. Puck along the near corner. Thunderbirds with the puck. That's Kalisti. Gets it up to Ford. Now pass over to Smith. Smith poke checked away nicely. That one by Butcher. Back to center ice. Shot in by the Thunderbirds. McPhail stops it behind his net. Now Butcher. On the near boards to Rowe. Rowe behind the net. Butcher. Back to Rowe. Now Rowe in his own zone. Pass it to Butcher. Butcher fanned on the pass. Sloppy play by the Eagles. Here's Mal pass. Finally broken up by Vitali, who clears at the center. Now Vitali, nice nifty pass to Rowe, but oh, it's going to be offside. Uh, uh, a delay on it, so it's okay. Offside. Yep, now here's Main across the blue line. Main moves in a shot. Blocker save by McPhail, and that'll stop the play with 12.39 to play in this first period. No score. That shot by Blair on the on the defense here last time, it was going wide of the net, but it, like you said, it hit somebody in front of it and it almost deflected in the net where it ended up because uh, it hit somebody high in the body. Larry, you were officially right on uh, Myron Blair. Uh, Tom, of course, who tweets often, is is Brendan's dad. Myron's his grandpa. He looks so young. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Tom, I thought it was his father. No offense. <laughs> I thought you were his brother. So there you go. So thanks for the clarification, Tom, and uh, thanks for watching tonight. So Myron is grandpa. Very nice man, by the way. Yes. Tharlson, back to Schwab, over to Tharlson. Center ice, Banser, across the blue line. Capasiolto gets it, a quick shot, that goes wide. Over to Malpass. Center ice, broken up by Banser. Shots for two T-Birds here in the first eight minutes of this first period. We're still scoreless. Puck Good pace to this game. It is, yeah. Both teams, I think, playing pretty well. Thunderbirds have controlled the play for the most part, but the Eagles getting themselves in this game. Now center ice, Clark has it. Clark over to die ball. Puck still in the neutral zone, shot in. Gordon makes the save. Leaves it behind the net. Picked up by Lawrence. Now Lawrence clears it to center. Tackle has to wait for Barterson to get onside. Barty with it, he'll shoot it in. Now Gordon plays it behind the net to Lawrence. Broken up by the Eagles. Crusoe with it. Crusoe will shoot that one off the near boards and down the ice. And that looks like it's going to be icing with 11-11 to play here in this first period. I mentioned earlier, Larry, that the Eagles, or excuse me, the Thunderbirds played in Espanola. Yes. As yeah. they were coming back, it was a snowy night. I believe it was Sunday night. And uh, there was a, uh, a family, a vehicle that was off the road. And the bus stopped. And members of the Thunderbirds team and organization helped that uh, family uh, get where they needed to go so kudos to the Thunderbirds oh, yeah. organization the bus driver for noticing that and for sitting out and helping now quick oh, shot and a goal that was uh Acosta had the shot Larry 21 who yeah was that was I believe Robbins, Robbins. who yeah. just kind of got that with what the shaft of his stick and it's a one nothing lead for the Thunderbirds 11-0-1 to play in the first period not much McPhail could I was do just on gonna, that one. I was just gonna say that McPhail didn't have a chance on that no so the T-Birds strike first. And we'll get the call from Bob St. Peter. Thunderbird goal scored by number 21, Braden Robbins. Assist number 14, Alex Acosta. The time of the goal, 8.59. So Robbins gets the goal, a cost of the assist, and Thunderbirds strike first, they lead 1-0. Now a shot in front of deflection there, Palmario, and it was almost Boy, a similar play, a little lower deflection, but a good chance for the Eagles as Gordon comes up big on that one. Yeah, he was right on top of Gordon, so he didn't have much chance to 
put the puck by him or anything, but uh, good play by Gordon. Good play by Palmeira. Good pass all around. Out of town, Larry Kirkland Lake leading Hurst 1-0 in the first period and Blind River leading Espinola 2-1. That one also in the first period. It's 1-0 T-Birds here. Tassone catches up to the puck. Leaves it behind the net to Ford. Now Ford with some space, a shot. Puts that one through the crease. On the near side boards, that's Casey. Casey gets around Kalisti. Casey in the near corner with the puck. Knocks down the T-Birds player. Now Bellini. Over to Kalisti. Kalisti up to Tassone off of his skate. Darlson with it. Now intercepted by the T-Birds. Tassone. Center ice. Bellini. Kalisti shoots it in. Over the stick of McPhail. Behind the net to Schwab. Schwab. Over to Tharlson. Back to Schwab. Back to Tharlson near side. Now he'll shoot it in. Plays it off the end boards. Picked up by Lawrence. Eagles go for a line change. Halfway through this first period, 1-0 in favor of the T-Birds. That puck shot down the ice. Picked up by McPhail. Now Schwab has it. Kept in by the T-Birds. And the Eagles have it in their own zone. That goal by Braden Robbins, his eighth of the season. Puck along the end boards. Rowe, Vitale has it. Puck still caught up in the... Thunderbirds player now picked up by Rowe. Rowe plays it over to the far side. Lawrence picks it up for the T-Birds. Up to Mal pass. And here comes Van Team. Van Team had a poke checked away by Dieball. Picked up there by Miller. Thought he was offside. He hesitated. Now a shot that goes behind the net over to Lawrence. Right in front of the Eagles bench. He moves in. A quick shot. That one deflected behind the net. Mal pass. Gets it back to the point. Lawrence. Lawrence with the shot. That one misses. Die ball over in the far corner. Miller fighting him for the puck. Now behind the net to Clark. Shots 5-4 T-Birds here in this first period. Now here's Rowe chasing the puck. Rowe shoots it down the ice. Thunderbirds do. Eagles have it. Butcher plays it to Vitale. Now Vitale with a shot. Gordon with the pad save. Here's Blair with it, backhand shot. That one deflected off the netting, rather off of Gordon into the netting. We'll have a face-off with 8.13 to play here in this first period. Again, folks, when you come here, there's lots of things to do. You can uh, buy a program for uh, win win, uh, prizes, Uh, 50-50 draw tickets, chuck a puck. You can win a jersey or get free tickets closest to the center ice, get free tickets for uh, the next Eagle home game. And I'm trying to think, well, you got to shoot for the car. You can got a chance on that. So a lot, lot of excitement, a lot of things going on. In fact, I think today we have uh, the mascots are playing. Maybe. We're, 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 we're still working that out. Oh. With, uh, apparently a couple of their cars couldn't start, so we're not quite <laughs> sure if, if the mascots are going to make it. But if they do, we'll have entertainment. Yeah, and that, and that whole H1N1 or whatever is going around, influenza, flu, I didn't get the flu shot, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Larry, the Winter Olympics have started. The opening ceremonies, which happened earlier this morning, thanks to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for me being able to watch it as I woke up. Those good old Canadians. Darn I'll tell right, you. because our broadcast end up being 12 hours later. It's already happened. Come on, NBC. Oh, oh there's a bad break there for the Thunderbirds. You got to blow the whistle now. A shot and a save, rebound, Let's and go. a goal. <laughs> That. That's number two. Yeah, King, King got hit with the puck. By his own player. Come off the glass and it caught him. He didn't have a chance now, to move. Larry, do you think the referee did that right? I mean, the Eagles had possession. They had uh, possession, Should they have yeah. blown that right away, or did they do a, a good job, in your opinion, well, I, I, let that play out? I, I believe they have to let that play I go. I agree. Yep, I agree. The Eagles had a scoring chance, and it wasn't an Eagles player that did anything vicious. It was his own player that hit. The Eagles tie this game at one. I was watching King when he got hit, so I didn't even see who scored. Neither Bob will tell I. us because he's good like that. Sometimes. <laughs> Eagle goals. Scored by number 11, Chris Benser. CJ. Assist. Number 13, Kyle Quinn. Time of the goal, 11.56. So CJ Banser from Quinnett. 
11.56 and it's a 1-1 hockey game. We'll keep an eye on King, hopefully he's okay. Now Quinn deflects that puck in. That's a lovely and talented Jenna with the chuck of pucks, along with Shelby wearing the uh, the camouflage. Are those the uniforms for next weekend, ladies? No, they 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 got to get new ones. Oh, ah, okay, now a chance for the Eagles in front. Eagles with it, chance shot, oh, big oh. save, Gordon. And he hangs on as Barson almost made it two to one. Wow. Lots of exciting. Exciting behind me here. Exciting yeah, really. on the I ice can't, in front, can't in front of me. <laughs> we got chuck pucks. We got people almost scoring. By the way, Larry, I have four chuck pucks tonight because uh, one of Mr. Orfanos' friends, is, Larry, L Larry is allowing me to throw one again. Yeah. Certainly hope I do better than last time. Surprised so oh. I didn't get fired. Now here's Tassone moving in. Tassone with a shot. Big pad Big save pad there. Save. You're right. McPhail with the right pad. It's a good move by Tassone, but a better move by McPhail. Now the Eagles with it. It's a 1-1 game. Seven minutes to play in this first period. Good hockey here at the Polar. That puck shot in. Picked up by the T-Birds at center ice. Clark gets it to tackle. Tackle with it. He's got Orfanos. Orfanos with it. A shot. Glove save there by Gordon. Now back to Butcher. He moves in a shot. That one's deflected Hi. wide. Orfanos tried to get it to tackle. Now that one played off the high glass. Blair kept it in, but now shoots it in after the Eagles touch up onside. Shots 9-6 Eagles with 6.25 to play in this first period. Now Puck, legal zone. As Eagles have it across the blue line, Tackle. Tackle moves in, he's knocked down by Ford, gets right back up. Puck goes behind the net. That goal by Banser, his fourth of the season. Now a shot that gets deflected into the netting and will stay in the netting and will have a face off with 6.01 to play in this first period, 1-1 hockey game. Puck's going to stay inside the uh, Thunderbird zone. It's deflected by the Thunderbirds into the netty. Sue Greyhounds, I believe, idle tonight, Larry, after winning last night in Niagara. They're on a road trip. They'll play tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon. The Greyhounds record 44-5-2-1. Yikes. Too good. They're good. They're uh, playing a little better now. Icing against the Thunderbirds. Speaking. I'll be seeing them uh, February 17th. Nice. I think the Sarnia Stinger coming in town. Yeah, the second best team in the OHL. I've and got tickets to that one. Speaking of playing better, the Laker hockey team won a pair of games last weekend, Larry. Well, they won on Friday. They won 2 nothing on Saturday. They're oh, up in excellent. Alaska. Some people couldn't make that trip. <laughs> that being me, of course, because that's a long road trip. We'd go. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd go <laughs> well, to I see would. that game this year. I would. The 57th and 60th ranked teams in the nation, and there's 60 teams in the nation, Larry. So uh, you do the trip. math on that uh, one. It's just a trip, that's all. I'm not going to Alaska in February, though Anchorage is probably a lot warmer than here. Now shot in, Gordon with the puck. Buckle on the end boards. No penalties yet in this game. Oh. We didn't say that last time these two teams played. Now Van Team with it. He puts a shot behind the net. Eagles. Clear it to center. Now Maine with it. Plays it in his own zone. Kalisti. Kalisti back to Heinrich. And that'll be an icing call with 5.02 to play here in this first period. Good hockey here, Larry Early. You're right. It is. I'm enjoying this. These teams will be at the John Rhodes Community Center tomorrow night. You can catch that one on Hockey TV with our friends from Sioux, Ontario. Tony and crew do a good job over there. And the Eagles will be back here next Friday. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it looked like uh, Kalisti's back there. He just came in on the bench right now. Okay. Wasn't it Ford that got hit, though? No, it was two. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, that's Ford. Oh, no, or King. two. I'm sorry, King. yeah. Now pocket center ice, Vitale up to Rowe. Vitale gets it back. Quick shot. Gordon with the save. Rebound. Kalisti picks it up. He'll head men it up to Acosta, just out of his reach. Now it's center ice. T-Birds have it, Lawrence. Lawrence lost the puck, and we're going to have a penalty, Larry. I spoke too soon, Yeah. and that's going to be an interference call, and I think that's going against number seven, Brendan Blair. Grandpa's going to give him heck. <laughs> yes, indeed. 4.26 to play here in this first period. Shots 10-6 Eagles. It's a 1-1 tie. 
as the Thunderbirds will go on their first power play of the night. Okay, we'll see how they're doing. A couple of sponsors for tonight's game. Uh, fix your stick for one of the one of the men right here beside us running the camera, uh, Rob Horn, and uh, oh, the Alpha Bar Antlers. Seven, Brendan Blair. Two minutes interference. So here we go, Thunderbirds on the power play, their first of the night. One-one tie here at Polar Stadium on a Friday night. Crowd, good crowd here. Not in the thousands likely, but still a pretty good crowd. Now the T-Birds have it. Over in the far corner, back to the point, Caruso. Caruso centers it, passes it over. Now pass near side, Acosta, and McPhail right there yeah. to cut off the angle and make the save. Minute 29 left on the power play. Ford was out too far to be the, the back door man. In my opinion, anyways. Face off to the right of McPhail. 3.55 to play in this first period. Eagles won that face off, too. Now Schwab will yeah. clear the zone. Caruso has it at center ice up to Terrio. Terrio across the blue line Ooh. as Robbins just in there yeah. too soon, and that'll bring the face off outside the blue line. Robbins was too late getting out, yep. and Terrio was coming in for it. Looked like Robbins slowed down a bit. That's why he. Oh, well. Eagles' next home game, as I mentioned, Larry, will be next Friday. And they'll take on Rayside Balfour. Actually, they'll take on Rayside next Friday and then a week from Wednesday. So back-to-back -back games against Rayside. That could definitely That's tell a lot a... about how the West is won or lost. Yeah, game changer there. Yeah. Two four-point games here at the Puller in the span of about five days. Now Tharleson with it. Tharleson can't clear it. Kept alive by the Thunderbirds. Miller with it behind the net. Brendan Miller. 54 seconds left on the power play. Bellini to F Miller. Now Kleisti near point. Kleisti gets it over to Smith off of his skate. And Tharleson will clear it down the ice for the Eagles as they get some fresh bodies out there. Good move. Three minutes to play in the first period. 35 seconds remaining on the T-Birds power play. Kleisti across the blue line. Kleisti now behind the net on the backhand. Now he passes to Caruso, kicks that one. Dump it down low, out of the reach of Smith. Now picked up by Tassone. Tassone back to Kalisti, just kept it in, but the Eagles clear it out. Vitali has it, Vitali in row, Vitali. And a poke checked away there by Smith, but Vitali keeps it alive, nice play. Gets it behind the net, and that'll pretty much do it for the power play. Vitali in front of shot, save Gordon. Gordon came out there and well made a big save. Eagles now at full strength. Miller comes across the blue line. Eagles almost had too many men on the ice. Now that one goes through the slot and down the ice. There's no icing on that one. Yep, Caruso picks it up. 2-10 to play in the first period. Shots 11-7 Eagles. Now here's Capasiolto with some space. Capasiolto with a shot. Gordon with the pad save. Now he puts it over in the far side. Malpass has it for the T-Birds. Nice move to get around Banser. Quinn picks it up over to Schwab. Now Capasiolto. Capasiolto will dump it in. Chased by Lawrence. Up to Mal pass. Now Schwab at the point. Capasiolto. Nice move. Capasiolto put it through the crease. On the near boards. Quinn. Quinn. Backhands it to the far side. Lawrence picks it up for the T-Birds. Poke checked away by Capasiolto. T-Birds do clear the zone. Minute 25 to play in the first. That will play off the high glass. Hang on the rail for a moment, over to Malpass. Malpass with it, back to the point. Now along the near boards. Robbins with it, Robbins moves to the net. Kind of ran out of real estate there as he ran into a couple players, he's slow getting up. As we're under a minute to play in this first period, Robbins a little uh, gimpy going to the bench. Butcher with it. Butcher up to Orfanos. Orfanos is passed, deflected. Almost caught up to by Barter. So now here's Tekel in front of backhand shot, save, rebound. That one just missed. Good scoring chance for the Eagles. Now another shot oh. deflected. Almost deflected by Tekel, save Gordon. Tekel with it. Eagles buzzing here towards the end of this first period. Barterson over to Tekel. Now Barty with it. 
Puck finally cleared as Blair chases that down. He's got a couple players on him. He's got to be careful. Good job to clear that one to center. Up to tackle. 15 seconds. Tackle. Pass quickly to Rafanel. He's got two players over there. Couldn't get it to him. 10 seconds to play. So the Thunderbirds had the edge in play in the first part of the first period. Still time here as a shot that just goes wide. But the Eagles strike for a late or one in the latter half of the first period. And after one, we are tied at one. We'll be back for the second period here on Hockey TV. Scott Nason, Larry Pazabon back at Polar Stadium here as we are about five minutes to start the second period of play as the Sioux Eagles and Sioux Thunderbirds are in a 1-1 tie after one period of play. Before we recap the scoring, uh, pause your thoughts on the first period. Good hockey. I agree. Fast hockey, one penalty, two goals, uh, up and down. Um, looks like the, the Thunderbirts carried it earlier, but uh, they're out shooting the Eagles, and now the Eagles are ahead of them in shots uh, 12-7. Uh, great. Like I say, I enjoyed the first period. I enjoyed the crowd. I'll get into that after, but go ahead. Yeah, it was really the Thunderbirds controlled the first part of the period. The Eagles controlled the second, out shooting the Thunderbirds, as Larry mentioned, by the count of 12-7. to Recapping the scoring in the first period, it was Braden Robbins scoring his eighth goal of the season on a deflection with an assist from Alex Acosta to make it one nothing T-Birds. And then C.J. Banser would score his fourth goal of the season at the 11:56 mark with assists from Kyle Quinn and Alex Schwab. And that's where we sit right now, Larry. You add an assist to Schwab on that first Eagles goal on your score sheet. And it is 1-1 tie here as we are about to start the second period. Out of town scores. Blind River has gone up on Espinola by the score of 4-1. Kirkland Link leading Hurst by the score of 1-0. That one in the second period. Lots of activity on Twitter. Larry, I want to make sure I say hello to everybody because we did have some new People tweeting in, want to say hello to Shvain Schwab watching tonight, as well as Janet Tharleson. Now she is here tonight. She made the trip up. She says a beautiful drive to the Sioux. Fun to watch the game in person. Want to say hello to our good friend Matt Pocket. He does some of the broadcasts here for our radio station. We have Bill Crawford doing the game tonight, but Matt is doing a basketball game, but he tweeted in saying, crowded perch up there tonight, my friend. <laughs> Indeed, we got... How we, you doing, Matt? We got, we got royalty up here, as a matter of fact. Steven Urfanos <laughs> in the crew. Uh, Ted, one of the guys, we didn't, we, we, I think we didn't get his name, Larry. He was one of the shooters right, between yes. periods, and uh, he went 0 for 2. He, he went did, 0 for 2? Yeah, he didn't, he didn't hit the I, middle, and he didn't hit the empty net. I, I talked to him down below there, and he said, I said, I, I heard a large roar. He says, was that you? He says, no, that was that, that was the kid. kid. Yeah. <laughs> want to say hello to Tom Blair watching, I believe, in St. Louis, as I just talked to his grandfather again, Myron Blair. He got a chuckle that I thought he was was uh, Brendan's dad instead of grandpa. He, he was down at the bottom of the stairs Yes, here. he was. Yeah, yeah. I talked to him also again. And apparently there's a fire at the Orfanos house. Now, I don't think the, the house is on fire, but not sure who that is. It might be Mrs. Orfanos. I'm not quite sure, but she she tweeted in. I want to say hello to Daniel Clark and family. Apparently, Daniel's wife gets a chuckle out of our uh, back and forth. He says sometimes we mention him more than his son. <laughs> also want to say hello to the... Teckle family, Lonnie and crew watching in Wausau, Wisconsin, along with the Bartersons, I believe. Want to say hello to Linda Quinn, along with Chris Quinn, Kyle's parents watching in snowy Chicago. And last but not least, want to say hello to Lenny and Maria Lamberti, along with Steve-O from Auburn watching the Lambertis. So, hey, lots of people tonight, Larry. I want to say hello to uh, Pat Lilly. He's brought a contingent of uh, Canadians over here again this this game, uh, he told me uh, after the last one that they were coming, and uh, they, he, he, he kept his word. He's sitting down underneath the Rothward uh, Motors there sign. Pat's got his back to us. Uh, that's probably the best side you're going to see on him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I do want to mention, Larry, that if you want to hear our broadcasts again, believe it or not, there are some people that do. We have a brand-new podcast page for our Swiegels broadcast on Hockey TV. It's thegamesportshow.podbean.com. You can hear, relive all of our greatest hits and <laughs> misses on the podcast page. It's great to hear if you want to keep it for the archive. You can download it for free. I won't charge you, I promise. Now Terrio gets a quick shot and a save there, McPhail. He got that with the toe of his skate. Good setup by the uh, Thunderbirds McPhail on that. McPhail hasn't had to make a lot of saves, Larry, but he's made quite a few good ones. He's made some good ones, yes. Now the Thunderbirds with it. They're going left to right as seen on your television or computer monitor. 
Smartphone, Tharlson, rather Barterson. I knew I'd do that once tonight. Quick shot and a save there by Gordon and both goaltenders making early saves here in this second period. Yeah, right under a minute. So, Larry, uh, second period means attendance challenge. Lots of the wow. folks I was talking to down there, including Daniel Clark and Stephen Urfanos, were talking about the attendance challenge. And so between now and the 10-minute mark of the second period, it is your turn okay. to put a number up. As far as how many people you think are here, I will say higher or lower. Did you get Rob to uh, shoot your son out there? He's the shoot dog, my eh? son. Well, what are you talking the camera about? Here. Oh, jeez. That's he's the See, camera walking around yeah, uh, the he's, Polar he's, Stadium. Yeah, he's here. getting mascot. Did, does he know you don't get paid for that? That's the thing I'm worried well, about. Well, you're his agent. What what kind of <laughs> deal were you doing? Yeah, apparently there? a bad one. Now here's Smith with it. Smith with the puck behind the net. I got another story about him in a moment. Crusoe shot that deflects wide. Puck along the near boards. Ford has it. Now behind the net, Smith. Poke checked away there by the Eagles. They'll clear it to center. Lawrence chases the puck down the ice. Lawrence in his own zone. Being pressured by Palmario. Now the Eagles trying to get that puck. Thunderbirds have it. That one will be played off the boards. Blair kicks it back in. Lawrence passes it over. Now back to center ice. Thunderbirds with it, out of the reach of Smith. A little sloppy segment of this game right now. By the Thunderbirds, that yeah. is. No shot down the ice. Rowe picks it up. Rowe moves in. Rowe with the shot and oh, a goal! Good one! <laughs> Through the five hole on Gordon. Nice individual effort by number 12, Austin Rowe puts it in, and the Eagles. Lead by the score of 2-1, to 18-16 to play in the second period. Boy, Rowe made that one happen right there. Yes, he did. He fought, he fought off the defenseman, beat him, and, and made a nice one right in the five hole on Gordon. We'll see if they give any assists on that there goal. There should be one coming up because that puck was uh, passed up by one of the Thunderbirds. 2-1 Eagles. Eagle goal. Look at that. Oh! I think that's Rowe again. My goodness. Vitalis yes, it is, yeah. set him up and Rowe buries it. He had that's... a wide open net there. A bad play by Gordon. So we're going to have two goals from him in the span of about what? 10 seconds? The first one was 144. And 153 here. Yeah, nine seconds apart. Sorry, Bob, didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, the second goal scored by <laughs> number seven, Blair. Oh. No. Assist. Number four, Mickey that's, Butcher. That's wrong. And number 12, Austin Rowe. The time of that second goal, that was, that's 44. Wrong. We're, We're going to get correct. the assist. Eagle goal scored by number 12, Austin Rowe. That's the first one. Assist, number 14, or wait. Gianni Vitelli. That's the second one. The time of the goal, 153. Yeah, that's going to be changed okay. there. That definitely was Rowe getting both those goals. So yeah. we'll, we'll check the stat sheet here. Here's Vitelli moving across the blue line. So the Eagles with two goals, nine seconds apart, we believe both by Austin Rowe. Definitely got the third, but I'm pretty sure he got the second. You're back on... I saw I yeah. saw number 12 scored also. Yeah. Here's Banser with it. Capasiolto. So the Eagles with a 3-1 lead just like that. Malpass has it at the blue line. Shot in there by the Thunderbirds. Eagles pick it up. They have momentum. Those two goals by Rowe. Quinn across the blue line. Quinn dumps it in. Kalisti behind the net. Now the T-Birds. With the puck. There we go. Scored by number 12, Rowe. You need to listen to us, Assist, Larry. Assist, number 7, Blair. And number 4, Butcher. Okay. On the second goal at 144. So that was Austin Rowe's third and fourth goals of the season, Larry. So he doubled his output of the season <laughs> in nine seconds. You got to love that. Really? Now Good the, stats. Yeah. Now here's the Eagles with it. Terrio dumps it in. Banser picks it up. Shots now 17-8 Eagles. And you really got to like that eight shots allowed by the Eagles. That's a big stat right now. Although, be it, there have been some good shots. Now Schwab dumps it in. Puck behind the net. Gordon 
Plays it over to Acosta. Now Schwab breaks it up, tackle. And you know, you look at the Eagle goal scorers, Larry, not their snipers that we're used to. No. Answer and row, yeah. Well, that's good news. That's what you want. You want scoring amongst the whole team, not Absolutely. about four players. Now Lawrence with it at the blue line. Shot in. That should be icing, and it yes, will it be is. with 15.42 to play here in the third period. What a start for the Eagles here in this second. Did good I say start. third? I meant second. Out of town scoreboard, Larry. Two other games in the NLJHL. Blind River now starting to pour it on Espinola now. They lead 5-1. Blind River could find themselves back in first place if this score holds. And we're going to have a fight to the finish in the West Division, no question there. Somehow it's going to be a fight, unless one team just runs the table, but I just don't see that happening no. right now. All four of these teams in the top four are evenly matched, and Elliott Lakes is not much further behind them. Now the T-Birds with the puck. Robbins. Plays that off the boards. Nice job by Blair to glove that one down, kick it in. Looks like Vance Nason's uh, mascot duties are over, Larry. Oh, yeah, I see him coming around. <laughs> He's said enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a heavy hit. It I was is. down there. I, I saw that. Wow. Now puck at he, center ice. He kept telling me his pants were falling down. I know, down. I was watching him. <laughs> Got to mention a, a story from him, Vance, or, uh, Larry, that the, the game that you didn't do, I had him on during intermission. Uh, his first hockey broadcast okay. here. Uh, he's also been doing high school basketball with me, doing like a halftime and a postgame segment. Well, on Tuesday night for a local uh, Brimley versus Sioux High basketball game, he did color commentary. For the first time, he did absolutely amazing. I was so proud of him. Well, he's got a good person to look up to. I appreciate that. No, I thought about me, uh, the color. (laughs) Well done. (laughs) You announced I'm color. (laughs) Nicely played, sir. Yes, he does listen, but he did a great job at 11 years old. It was was a lot of fun. And if you want to hear it, you can go to the podcast page of my sports show, the game sportsshow.podbean.com. I better watch out, eh? You're going to be... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I better watch out. Now a chance in front of shot. That goes wide as Lamberti had the scoring opportunity. Smith takes it. 14-40 to play in the second period. 3-1 Eagles. Two goals here. Nine seconds apart by Austin Rowe. Now Kalisti. He just winds and fires. That goes wide. Over to Bellini. Now centering chance. Bouncing puck. Goes back to the point. Nope, kept alive by the Eagles. They'll clear it to center. Again, we haven't seen too much of the nasty stuff we saw a couple weeks ago, at least as of yet. It's early yet. Yes, it is, especially if they start getting further behind. Now here's Schwab. Schwab at center ice, cross the blue line, puts a shot on. Gordon will glove that one down, and he'll hold with 14.02 to play in this second period. A couple more sponsors to hear from. Uh, we got Salon C. Midwest Wealth Strategy, Century 21, Guido's Pizza, and Air Bear Travel. Shots now 19-8 in favor of the Eagles. Saxton wins the draw. Eagles doing a good job on the faceoff tonight, Larry. They are. Now a shot by Dieball and a save. And you go back to when they played a couple weeks ago at the Rhodes. Eagles won that game 3 to nothing, and it's 3-1 here. So Eagles have had their way with the Thunderbirds here in the last four-plus periods. It's not over, though. No, it's Never. not. This team will fight to the end, that's they, for sure. They showed that last week, uh, or the last time they were here. Rose pass just over the stick of Clark as McPhail comes way out to play. He's got to be careful as he clears that one to center. Miller picks it up. Miller, nice move across the blue line. Miller puts it in front. Player open. He shot it wide. Kind of spun himself around there. Now Saxton. Saxton's pass broken up at center ice. Is it me or we've just not seen much of Saxton tonight? I don't know. Uh, it's. I, I think you're right because uh, I remember him in the first period. But yeah, maybe even he's not Palmario touched. hasn't played. Well, that no, much. Palmario's been on a lot because he's been touching the puck. Okay. Uh, Jake uh, doesn't seem like the puck. He's handling the puck much. Now here's Dieball in front of his own net. King back out there for the T-Birds. So that's good to see. He was hit, looked like in the face by a puck earlier in the first period. The Eagles scored their first goal. Now here's Saxton has it. Saxton across the blue line. Tried to feed Rowe. That one broken up. Now Saxton goes up hard on King. King's looking at it. Looks like they're having words, but the referee's right behind him watching. King is having lots of words with Mr. Saxton. Maybe they're talking about the GST. 
Do I still have that over there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not Rob, as I knew that did arise uh, on you. 13%. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, you got a good health care, so that should make you happy. Now Banser over to Clark. Over to Capasiolto. Right in front of the bench of the T-Birds. Here come the T-Birds with it. Robbins tried to put it in front. Eagles player sprawled out to stop that one. Now here's Caruso in it. Shot blocked there. Here come the Eagles. Might have a chance here. Capasiolto has got Clark going to the net. Capasiolto with it. Clark went to the bench instead. Had a line change. Lawrence with a nice move at center ice. Gets it up to Terrio. Now Terrio back. Robbins move again. Shot. McPhail. Puck somehow went wide. Didn't Good see. set up by Terrio. Yeah. A oh, big hit there on Quinn by Lawrence. A legal one as well. So now we're starting to see the hitting ramp up a bit, Larry. As long as it's clean. And that'll be an offside. Ooh. Well, a guy come off the bench. Yeah. And I think that's what Coach Parco is explaining to his crew is, no, you can't do that. <laughs> I was looking at the game summary of uh, the Eagles. Last time the Thunderbirds played the Eagles and the Thunderbir or Thunderbirds played Espinola. There's a couple of bench minors on that team. All the time. It seems to be a lot of minors that Thunderbirds are picking yeah. up, whether it's too many men on the ice or uh, whatever. Those are, those are the unnecessary penalties that you don't want. <laughs> Face off. <laughs> no, I'm laughing about something else. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to share this one, Larry. Oh, okay. <laughs> now here's Blair. <laughs> going to leave that one okay. on Twitter. Now here's Barnerson. Over to Tackle. Kicks it ahead. Back to Butcher. Now behind the net to Tackle. Tackle over to Urfanos. Back to the point. Bounces over Blair's stick. That puck bouncing a lot tonight. Yes, it is. First period, uh, it was all against uh, Eagles. And start off the second period, it seemed to be against the Thunderbirds. Barterson has it across the blue line. Pass to Orfanos. Now Orfanos, he gets knocked down there. Okay, no call. Kalisti with the hit. Nice play by him. Now the T-Birds have it. Nice pass to Smith at center ice. Dangerous player. Smith's pass just behind Kalisti. Now the Eagles. Orfanos gets it up to tackle. He's got Barterson going to the net. Tackle with it. Tackle with a shot. Oh, and a nice. goal. Oh. Nick Tackle, he's a sniper. Dad, Lonnie, and family back in Wausau, Wisconsin. I better cheer in for that one as it's 4-1 in favor of the Eagles with 10.43 to play in this second period. Boy, he can just shoot the puck, can he's, he? He's, he's a sniper. <laughs> yes. He likes to score, too. Yes, he does. Actually, he passes the puck. He's got more assists than goals. goals. Scored by number 21, Nick Tackle. Assists. Number 10, George Ofanis. The time of the goal, 9-17. I thought it was Orfanos getting yep. assist on that one. Okay. Eagle goal scored by number 21, Tackle. Assist, number 10, Orfanis. The time of the goal, 9-17. So it's 4-1 Eagles. That was the score of a couple weeks ago here at Puller in favor of the Thunderbirds. Eagles having a heck of a second period. Shots now 21-9. Lamberti plays it behind the net to Paul Mario. Paul Mario, try to get around here. Larry, you're going to have to get just, close to your attendance guest here. I just here. thought of that now. I looked at the clock and said, holy God. <laughs> a lot of action. I'm, I'm into the after. game here, you know. Well, that's good. That's what you're supposed to do. Now Lamberti gets knocked down over the far, far board. Excuse me. Now here's Paul Mario with it across the blue line. Jake Paul Mario has it behind the net, puts it in front. That one goes all the way to center ice. Picked up by Clark. Clark over to Casey. Casey shoots it in. We have a broken stick broken on the ice. Stick. Yeah, fix your oh, stick. there we go, Lamberti. There we go. Oh, now here we go. Yeah, we figured we this was going to happen as Lamberti, he's getting hit by Malpass. And so we're more than likely going to see penalties here as we have 9.30 to play in this second period. And it's 4-1 Eagles. So you would think Lamberti's going to get a penalty. Is that King again that's down? I don't know if it was King. either but King or Maine. See 17 Malpass there. jumped into that one, yeah. so he should be picking up something for the Thunderbirds. It's not Maine because he's out there. So, Well, Larry, uh, it's time to play our attendance oh. challenge as many people are on the edge of their seats here at Polar Stadium and on Twitter that want to know what you think our official attendance is. 
So, Larry, your turn. You're up by one in the season series. I will say for those on Twitter, there may be a few more fans on this side than on that side, but it's pretty evenly spaced out. So, Larry, do you have a number for us today? Yep, 817. 817 is the official guess by Larry Pazabon. I will say that attendance count is... Ooh, that's a good guess. I'll go lower. 817 lower. And while we have it, speaking of Twitter, want to say hello to Vicki Portluck watching in Houston. Uh, she's bummed that Bobby isn't playing, of course. We all are. We were hoping to see him in the lineup tonight. Hopefully he'll be back in soon. And uh, we're Probably just a precaution. You know? I think so. He was out in warm-ups, but he, about halfway through he went to the bench. Obviously upset. He wants to go out there and play. Who doesn't? But uh, hopefully he will be back soon. And I want to say hello to uh, Kevin Kane watching tonight. As uh, <laughs> he, he, he's pining for <laughs> he's pining for Vance Nason to take over this job to my right. <laughs> Kevin, we appreciate the humor in yeah, you watching. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing too much here, Larry. As we do have a, a situation on the ice as the Thunderbirds player still down as a training staff for both the Eagles and Thunderbirds are out there. He went hard into the boards. And so we're hoping for the best. Again, I didn't see it. Could be Braden King. I thought I saw a two. But I'm not 100% sure who it is. So, Larry, while we have a timeout, uh, you okay. mentioned there was a broken stick out there. Yes, yes. And, uh, and, so uh, uh, whoever that individual was, obviously family's going to be out a couple hundred bucks no, for that. No, 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 no. Okay. Where, where do you get these figures, you know? I'll Canadian Tire? <laughs> No, you got to fix your stick, $35. These guys will fix the shaft, the blade, the heel, the toe. And even if there's a gold stick, they'll fix that also. Guaranteed for 30 days. You won't have to go and spend two, three, four hundred dollars $400 for a stick. $35, brand new. And I know last year, a couple of kids I saw theirs that were repaired. An excellent job. You couldn't even tell. So you get a hold of Fix Your Stick, F-I-X-U-R-S-T-I-C-K dot com. Get a hold of Rob Horn, 906 322-3330 or Brian Huntley 860-578-3606 They'll even honk the UPS truck horn, yeah. Rob Will yeah. Now what was your guess again on the attendance challenge Larry? What did I say? 817 817 and I say lower Yes Alright, what's out there folks? Well we will uh, put that out to our friends on Twitter What's Josh saying over here? Did he, uh, he hasn't tweeted in yet Oh as now the Thunderbirds player is up, so that is very good news, Larry. And Lamberti just went to the dressing room. Boy, he is coming up very slow. Again, still trying to catch a number. So they got on the clock that the Thunderbirds have two minutes, so I'm not sure what the uh, Eagles are going to get on this one. It is number two. Yeah, it was King, so boy, he's yeah. having a rough night, Larry. Got hit by the puck in the first period. and Okay, Lamberti, uh, Lamberti's got five. All right, so we're putting it out there, Larry. The attendance challenge. Daniel Clark says lower. He says 642 is old hull, hull number. I don't know what that means. I've never was on a ship. And Linda Quinn says 743, so we got two lowers. And now we have five on the board for Lamberti, so... That could be it for him. Yeah, he went to the he went to the bench and he's gone yep, to the dressing so. room. So we got serving. It. Oh, George, George Orfanos yep. is sitting this one. Yep. So we got Orfanos in the box. We have two minutes on the board for the Thunderbirds. There, as I believe that was Malpass, Larry, that was going in after the play. And so we'll see if this is just the game or potentially more. We've seen sometimes that being more. Don't want to speculate on that, but. Anytime somebody gets hit in the boards like that, sometimes it can cost. So 9.30 to play in this second period. 4-1 in favor of the Sioux Eagles. As that latest goal by Nick Teckle, his 26th of the season. Austin Rowe scored twice earlier this period, his third and fourth. And C.J. Banser had his fourth in the first. Braden Robbins, the goal scorer for Thunderbirds. 17, Tyler Malpoff. Two minutes for roughing to the Sioux Eagles to number 24, Jake Lamberty. Five-minute major 
for charging. Charging. The time of the penalties, 10 30. Well, they didn't say a game misconduct, Larry. They just said a five minute major. So maybe he was not ejected from this game. We'll, uh, we'll try to clarify that, Larry. I know the Lamberties are watching in Arizona, so they probably would like to know these sort of things. So here we go. Four on four hockey for another minute 40, and then the Thunderbirds will go on a three-minute power play where they can score as many times as they wish. Now Robbins has it. Still lots of time in this game. Yep. We have nine minutes to play in the second period. It was 1-1 one, one after one. Now Robbins over to Terrio. Terrio behind the net to Robbins. Now Clark up to Rowe. Rowe on the left wing side. Nice move again. Almost got around Caruso. Now Vitali. Ooh, quick poke checked away there by Caruso. Otherwise, Vitali would have been in on a break. This line's played well tonight. Here's Vitali. Vitali. Pass. Back to Blair. His shot. Bouncing one. Gordon makes the save. Shots 21 9 in favor of the Eagles. Back to Blair. Over to Butcher. Butcher with a quick shot right into the chest of Gordon, who will hold. Good That's penalty killing by the Eagles in that one. They got off a minute and seven seconds. Now, now we'll get a line change. Still four on four, Larry, for another 53 seconds. Sorry. We'll get Vance up here. He'll okay. <laughs> can't help myself. Larry, looks like your security detail is behind you. Now here's Smith with it. Smith across the blue line to Tassone. Tassone behind the net. Thunderbirds will go on a power play in 40 seconds. Smith loses the puck. Now Palmario up to Saxton. Saxton on the near side. Still has it. Quick shot. That one went off the glove of Gordon wide. Now Palmario over in the far corner. Now Palmario behind the net. Try to head Butcher in front for a moment. Now over to Saxton. Saxton. Butcher. Butcher on the near side boards. Behind the net to Palmario. Eagles will be shorthanded here in about five seconds. Smith picks it up. And the Thunderbirds go on the power play for three minutes. Eagles were looking for a penalty on that. Now Saxton trying to clear it out of the zone. Celeste. Celeste, excuse me. Now Tassone tried to center it. Picked up by Saxton. He's been out there a while. Saxton one on one. Saxton. With the puck, trying to get around Caruso. T-Bird's on the power play, 2.35 remaining. Malpass at center ice. Pass over to the far side, now back to Malpass. Quick shot, that goes wide. Over to Saxton, he shoots it down the ice. Eagles need a line change here if they can get off. Saxton definitely needs to get off. He's going now. He's been out for about three minutes, he's gassed. Here come the T-Birds, across the blue line. Terrio to Van Teen, quick shot. That goes high. Tackle shoots it down the ice. 2.10 left on the power play. Gordon stops it behind his net. T-Birds with the puck. Over along the far side board. Shot in. Costa. Costa at the point. To Terrio. Dumps it down low. Now back to the point. Acosta almost lost that puck. Just kept it in. Now Robbins, on the end boards, T-Birds, Costa, passes it over, Caruso, shot deflected to Van Team. now back to the point, minute 30 left on the power play, six minutes to play in the second, 4-1 Eagles, Caruso with it, Caruso, over to Van Team. good passing by the T-Birds, but they can't quite get a shot off yet, now here's Acosta, Acosta behind the net, with the puck, far circle, Puts it back to the point over and the stick out. of Caruso. And Bartersen on him. Now puck in the center ice area. Tharlson, nice job. It's going to be a high stick, but the Eagles will take it because they can get a line change. Yeah, face-offs inside. What do you got there, Larry? Okay, I got a, from our community li liaison for the Eagles. Uh, Ken Murphy said, I'd uh, like to say hello to the fans in the end zone to the right of the goalkeeper. And you want to say hello to Don fans. Craven over there. Yeah, Don's there. And uh, number one fan, Phil Benedict, and that's the cookie lady's that's husband. That's right, yes. Well, and very good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. 
Craven won the 50-50 last week. I slept in for breakfast. I didn't cash in. <laughs> now Bellini has it. 50 seconds left on the power play. Rink wide pass to Smith. Across the blue line. Smith with it. Smith off the boards. Miller. Now he loses the puck. Vitale has it. Vitale. You can burst in. Yeah, this line has played very good tonight. Vitale Rowe. 30 seconds left on the power play. Miller tried to get around Blair. Back to the point, Bellini. Over to Kalisti. Quick pass. Off the skate of Miller. Now Miller behind the net. Centering chance. A shot. Oh, big, big save. save again. Fail. Got that pad out and read that one like a novel. Good setup. The, the, that's really the only shot the, I think the, the Thunderbirds had on goal. And it was a good setup by the uh, Thunderbirds, but it took uh, four minutes and 40 seconds to do that. But uh, McPhail came up with a big save there. Good pad. He threw the leg out there. Nice save. And control the rebound. There's another keeper. Eagles win this face off too. We got someone other than uh, our usual uh, person complaining about the officials on Twitter. <laughs> That's not us, just for the record. Now here's Palmario chasing the puck down. That's going to do it for the power play of the T-Birds. There's our fans that's coming out now. Yep, Eagles at full strength, so they dodge a bullet there. Maine shoots it in. Over to Lawrence. Lawrence put it in front, picked up by Palmario. Now he gets it up to Orfanos. Orfanos at center ice, cross the blue line. Orfanos with a shot. That one deflects high into the netting. We'll have a faceoff with 4.14 to play here in this second period. Okay, a couple more sponsors. Uh, Best Western, War Memorial Hospital, Law Offices of William Dyke Justin, Harmony Health Foods, Marchetti Distributing, and that's it for now. Out of town scoreboard, Larry Blind River leading Espanola 6-2 after two periods of play and a 2-2 tie in Kirkland Lake between Hurst and the Goldbiners. It's 4-1 Eagles here. Four minutes to play in this second period. And with the win for the Eagles, they could cut the lead, the deficit rather, behind the Thunderbirds. However, if Blind River wins, they'll be the team in first place. We should know that before the end of this one because that game's already in second intermission. So you would assume Blind River's going to win that one. But you never assume, Larry, sometimes. You know what that spells, eh? <laughs> yes, I do. Thank <laughs> you. Here's Banser with it. Tried to get it to Quinn. Puck loose in front. Still there. Quinn couldn't quite get a handle on it. Now Quinn. And that one will go out of play with 3.33 to play Deflection. in the second period. He'll stay inside the zone. Uh -oh. Purse, whoa. Larry, did you lose your purse? No, wait, yours is pink, right? No, uh, carry those man bags. I don't carry a purse. <laughs> yeah, man bag. You remember? <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seinfeld. Was the executive or something? I can't remember what he called it. but <laughs> yeah. Now puck at center ice. Taken by the T-Birds, Bellini. Bellini shoots it in. McPhail stops it behind the net. Over to Orfanos. Now Teckel has it. Teckel at center ice. Oh, we got hit up high there. No call. Boy, that was pretty obvious from this perspective at least. Now here's Orfanos up to Teckel. Teckel with the puck. As you might see a little more of the chippiness start here, Larry. Yeah, it looks like it. That one shot down the ice. Robbins just lost his stick or it broke. Robbins goes right to the bench. Yeah. Now here's Tharlson with a shot. That one rifled wide. Puck taken by Terrio. Up to Tasson. Tasson across the blue line. Acosta shot. Misses the net. Puck goes oh, there, the there's too many, oh, there's too many men. <laughs> hit, the, hit somebody all. <laughs> now here's Schwab with it. Center ice to tackle. 2.25 to play in the second period. Three goals by the Eagles has given them a 4-1 lead. Lawrence with it. Off the boards. Now shot back down the ice. Schwab chases the puck. Shots 24-10 in favor of the Eagles. And I believe Thunderbirds only had seven shots in that first period. Now a shot that's rifled wide. They have three this period. And that puck goes out of play as it goes off a player's glove with two minutes exactly to play in this second period. A couple more sponsors. We've got uh, Central Savings Bank. From, they're located in Sioux, Michigan.
Christmas, St. Ignatius, Hessel, and Manistique. So, Larry, everybody on Twitter, including myself, have all said lower. Oh, come on. You <laughs> Josh uh, Horn. Or, uh, Josh, you went lower also? Fabulous DJ says lower. So we'll, we'll oh. get the clarification. I need it because I need to tie up this series. I don't know. Dad, Rob, what do you call? What are you calling? Yeah. No. He's thinking about it. He's thinking. Okay. Yeah, everybody's going lower, He's Larry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> not by hey, much. Maybe, you're, right. maybe no. you're the one that's right, Larry. Okay. We're all wrong. <laughs> that's something Fonzie couldn't say. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's before my time oh, again. Oh, come on. Fonzie, what are, we, yeah. what are you talking about? Happy he, days. Was he on the Muppets? What are you talking about? Uh, now here's Banser with it. Banser, a shot. Save Gordon. He picks up the rebound. As C.J. Banser going for his second goal of the night. He's played a solid game. Well, you can't fault many Eagles right now. It's been a been a solid 40, well, 30, 38 20. minutes and 20 seconds so far. Not 40 minutes yet. Eagles want to get out of this period with at least a 4-1 lead. Or 5-1. Or 5-1, oh, yeah. Anything. Face-off one by the T-Birds. As they've only managed to get four shots on goal here in the <laughs> second period. That was uh, Bellini just booted that out of the, over the glass into the second row, I think. So a minute 33 to play in this second period. We'll be back a week from tonight here at Polar Stadium as the Eagles will take on Rayside Balfour. That'll be our next home broadcast. The Eagles will be in Sioux, Ontario tomorrow to take on the T-Birds at the Roads. Now Rowe behind the net, looking for the natural hat trick. The tally, put it through the slot. Now Blair. Blair with the shot oh, and the goal! Is. That might hit somebody. I don't know for sure. I think Vitaly. No, everybody's throwing their hats, Larry. So oh, I'm yeah? thinking oh, that's Rowe. Row. Oh, okay. Getting his third goal here, we believe, of the second period. We don't see many natural hat tricks around here. And so the Eagles, you said why not 5-1, Larry? And it is indeed 5-1 Eagles as they put the goal on the wrong side of the scoreboard. <laughs> there we go. So 5-1 Eagles, we believe that's Rowe as Blair is going to get an assist as he had the shot. Oh, mom tackle on. He's, oh, nice to meet you. So, uh, and what's your first name? Was that? Dee Dee, all right, Dee Dee Tackle. Okay, and Dan and Carol Murphy will get the goal call. Thank you for coming up. Floyd by number 12, Austin Rowe. So there it is, Rowe with the hat trick. Assist, number seven, Brendan Blair. And number three, Jake Saxton. So Saxton and Blair get the assist as Dee Dee Tackle comes up during the broadcast. Of course, we met Lonnie, Nick's dad. Now we met Mom, also grandparents watching tonight, so... Good, good to see. 30 seconds to play here in the period. Eagles don't want to give up a late one here as they lead 5-1. to one. Miller with the puck over in the far corner. He gets hit. 20 seconds to play. Eagles with one of their best periods of the year so far as we have 15 seconds remaining. Now Caruso puts it in a shot that misses the net. Rebound goes to Tharaldson. Eight seconds to play. So the Eagles entered this period tied at one. Four goals in the second period. Three from Austin Rowe, one from Nick Teckle, and the Eagles lead by the score of 5-1. to one. Larry and I will be back for the third period of play here on Hockey TV. Back on Hockey TV, Scott Nason along with Larry Pazabon after two periods here at Polar Stadium. The Sioux Eagles, after four goals in that second period, lead the Sioux Thunderbirds by the score of five to one. Before we recap the scoring in a busy second period, pause. Your thoughts on the game and especially that second period for the Eagles. Good second period for the Eagles. You're right when you said earlier, uh, it's one of the better periods. We see them playing a long time and uh, kudos to uh, Mr. Rowe there with a the natural hat trick. Uh, yeah, the, the Thunderbirds could have came back in the game. They had a five minute uh, power play. Well, actually three minutes uh, because they're both uh, Killing off uh, two minutes each on that five minute, and they didn't. They had one shot on goal. That was it. Just one shot at that point on that five minute power play. They didn't uh, do anything. Uh, you know what? Uh, last week, last time we played them, we went to hockey game and a fight broke out. I hope we don't get that in the third period here. Now I hope we still have a hockey game, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Recapping the scoring in the second period, Larry, the Eagles got on the board at the 144 mark. Austin Rowe with an assist from Brendan Blair and Mickey Butcher. And then nine seconds later, Rowe would score his second of the night, fourth of the season. Assist from Johnny Vitale and Jake Saxon at the 153 mark. Nick Teckel would score his 26th goal of the season at the 917 mark with assist from George Orfanos and Brendan Blair to make it 4 to 1. And then Austin Rowe would complete the natural hat trick at the 1847 mark with assist from Brendan Blair and Jake Saxton. And that's where we sit right now, a 5-1 Sioux Eagles lead. Shots on goal in that second period, 14-5 in favor of the Eagles. A two-period total of 26-12. So, Larry, that's really the stat that sticks out to me is the Eagles have only given up 12 shots in two periods. If your defense has only given up 12 shots after two, you're going to be winning most of those games. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you, McPhail, out of those 12 shots, there's a couple of them. Could, yeah. He made some good saves. He, he played well in that first and second period. Out of town, Larry, two other games besides this one. Espinola has gotten one back, but they lead. They trail, rather, Blind River by the score of 6-3. to three. That one midway through the third period. And Kirkland Lake leading Hurst by the score of 3-2. to two. So if those two scores hold, we will have a new team in first place in the West Division. Blind River would have 64 points. The Thunderbirds would stay in second at 63. Rayside would stay, would actually fall to third. They're idle tonight with 62, and the Eagles would move up to 59. So they would be five points out of first place and just four points behind the Thunderbirds in the Wild West division. <laughs> wild West. Eh? That's right. Wild, wild, wild West. West. Well, speaking of Wild, Larry, our attendance challenge was fairly wild tonight as you and I do this in the second period, and you put a guess on the board of... 817. And our official attendance is... I'm not telling you. Well, we, 748. I, I already put it on Twitter, so it was <laughs> lower. So everybody, as I put on Twitter, and the winner is all of us, not Larry. As everybody said, lower Josh, along with Linda Quinn, who really gets the prize for the closest guest. She got 743, so she Ooh. was only off by five, as well as... Daniel Clark, he also picked lower, and Stephen Arfano. So everybody wins but Larry. So Larry's buying rounds at the Alpha later. Oh, the loser does? I thought the winner does. <laughs> we got. Oh. So here we go, Larry. We're about to start the third period of play as the Eagles look to knock off the Thunderbirds. This is their final game here at Polar Stadium, their final regular season game. Thunderbirds will not be here unless these two teams meet in the playoffs, which is, well, pretty good possibility yes, at some stretch. Either the second round, the third round. They can't meet in the first. No. But uh, these two teams could definitely tangle. We saw that last year with the Thunderbirds finishing first, the Eagles fourth, yet the Eagles swept the Thunderbirds. Four straight. Four straight. It still seems hard to believe. Yeah, and, that was <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Eagles were a little bigger underdog last year than they are this year. These two teams pretty evenly matched this year. The whole West Division top four is very evenly matched. So here we go. Eagles with the 5-1 lead. Tharlson shot saved. Gordon rebound in front. He sprawls out and makes the save. So the Eagles not letting up on the gas. And if you're an Eagles fan, that's what you like to see. Really, don't uh, take anything for granted. Face off to the left of goaltender Brandon Gordon. Larry excited about the Winter Olympic hockey without the NHL. Yes, I am be too. interesting. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I think I think guys have maybe a little more to play for, a little more heart. Not saying the pros didn't, but well, I, I you know what the pros you go there you get hurt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're out of money. Yeah, the team, uh, you know, tackle back good. the butcher. I agree. Butcher with the puck, pass over to Barterson. Barty behind the net. Now taken by the Thunderbirds. Caruso. These two teams will play tomorrow night at the Rhodes. We'll have that one on Hockey TV with our friends from Sioux, Ontario. Tony in the game, doing a great job over there. Now here's Caruso across the blue line. Caruso still has the puck. Thunderbirds have a long ways to go, but they got to get one quickly here. Now puck in front, taken by Butcher. Butcher with Palmario. Butcher across the blue line. Shot up high, Gordon. Makes the save, gives up a big rebound. Now Casey picks it up, drops it for Banser. He has a goal tonight. Taken away by the T-Birds. 
Van Team across the blue line. Quick shot. And McPhail just going to glove that one down and not take any chances and hold on to the puck. A um, couple more sponsors here. We have Pro Shop, Big Bear Arena, Tryon Solutions, and Holiday Inn Express. Patronize those places, folks, when you're in town. Face off to the left of McPhail. 18-16 to play in this third period. We did get clarification that Lamberti was, uh, did receive a game misconduct on that penalty in the second period, so he won't be back tonight. They didn't announce it at first. Now a shot there, McPhail makes the save. We're going to die ball. Row at center ice. He has three goals tonight. He had two going into this game all season. <laughs> I think we know who our first star will be, barring anything unexpected here in the third. Of course, we don't pick those. No, we don't. Sometimes I'd like to. <laughs> well, you always can. We can have Larry Pazbon's no, no, three no, stars. No. no, then we'd be in. Good way for you to alienate, alienate more of the public. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're on a good streak this year, Larry. You got yeah. people wanting 11-year-olds to replace you. <laughs> every, 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 time you get a, every time you get a phone call. <laughs> I just, do I want to answer this? Do I answer, yeah. Bruno again? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> on the far side to Robbins. Robbins. I hold my breath. <laughs> yes, indeed. I hold my ah, tongue, too. It, let it go to voicemail. <laughs> I'll deal with it later after a couple gin and tonics. Now here's Kalisti with it. Kalisti at center ice. Lost the puck. Picked up by Capasiolto. Now the Thunderbirds have it. I got to make a comment. You know, in the first, second period, you say we haven't seen too much of Saxon. Yeah, we've seen him then, a lot more. Then, then we saw him after you make that comment. Then he's out there killing a. The five-minute penalty, he's yeah. got, he drew an assist yeah, on the last goal. Yeah, two assists tonight, yeah. No, just one. I got him down I for one. I thought he had two. I'll look at our stat sheet here in a moment. Now Kalisti plays it off the far bo near boards, rather. Okay. Puck in center ice. Well, five of them in front yeah. of the penalty box. Sorts of players behind us. In front, in be uh, below us, I should say. There's six of them there. Three in each team. Okay. Yeah, Saxon has goals, Larry, on the third and fifth. Or, excuse me, assists on the third and fifth goals. So well, add an assist. Added yep, they add an that. assist okay. there. Both on the row goals, the last two he scored. Now here's you. Tara. You're welcome. I don't lie. At least most of the time. Now Blair. Sometimes you fool me, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I may fib, but I don't lie. <laughs> now here's Caruso with the puck in his own zone. Russo, center ice, Blair, now Barterson with it. Barty, one on five. Barty gets around one. Still has the puck. Nice job just to keep the puck. No power plays for the Eagles tonight so far. Now a rifle shot there by Tackle. That goes down the ice. All the way around and down the, inside the Eagles zone, right over the icing line, or the goal line. So Mom Tackle tonight come up here as with the Eagles scored their fourth goal, I believe. Lonnie and gang watching in. Wisconsin, appreciate his call earlier today, let me know. Now Heinrich at the point, shot, that deflects wide. Tackle over at the far corner, now Barterson. Barterson up to Orfanos, Orfanos, nice nifty pass to Tackle. Oh. Tackle in, Tackle he, shot. Ran out of room. Yeah, he ran out of room, Gordon with the save, beautiful pass by Orfanos. Buckle on the near boards, T-Bird's end, now picked up by the Eagles. Miller has it at center ice, now he gets knocked down. Puck picked up by Dieball. Dieball on the left wing side. Fanos wants the puck. Dieball shot. Save Gordon. Dieball gets the rebound. Now our Fanos with it. Fanos tried to play that off the boards. Taken away there by Tassone. He clears the zone. Van Team across the blue line. Now behind the net. Capasiolto. Over on the far boards. Casey. Now at center ice. Palmario chases it down. Palmario, nice move. Palmario in. Shot. Oh, oh there it is. And a goal. <laughs> Capasiolto will get the goal. Palmario set that one up. Larry, even and you and I are scoring that one. You're right. With 14.20 to play in the third period, that might just pretty much do it here. It's a lot of time, but it's 6-1 Eagles. What an individual effort by Palmario. Capasiolto had the old net. He just, <laughs> he did. You're in the right spot at the right time. Yeah. Don't miss. Yep. They all go down as goals on the score sheet, and Capasiolto will get the goal. 
We'll see how Bob does with that last name today. <laughs> Eagle goals. Dortmund number nine, Matt Caposoloto. <laughs> Assist number eight, Jake Palmario. The time of the goal, 540. <laughs> Eagle. Eagle goal scored by number nine, Capo Saluto. <laughs> Assist, number eight, Palmario. Two different players apparently scored yeah. that game. <laughs> that but he's wearing that number eight number uh, sweater. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a good night for Bob up until then. Now here's a chance for the T-Birds. Now a shot that goes wide. I think he knows how much we... No. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> He's a man of God. You know, all things. Sells tombstones or yeah, something. Yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. Here's Paul Mario. He's going to bury us one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to drop one. Yes, indeed. I need some help. 13 <laughs> 20 to play in the third period. Always laughing fun when you're up 6 1, Larry. Now yeah. Blair's shot goes wide as he gets dumped, and that didn't look good there. Blair is down. As I thought it was Lawrence with the hit, and boy, he came down. I missed it. Yeah, he came down hard. I almost thought he got came down on his knee. Well, let's see if they're going to have discussion on this and see what the four. Of them I don't know if about. it was a legal hit. I caught just the tail end of it. No penalty was called. So he might have got hit up high. So trainer Kerry Evie very busy tonight. Larry, I want to mention, we mentioned it earlier, if anyone is watching on hockey TV and wants to hear the audio of these broadcasts, I have a brand new podcast page where not only do I put broadcasts of Sioux Eagles hockey that Larry and I do, but we also put up our sports show, The Game. We talk a lot about the Eagles and the NLJHL. That show is heard on Monday nights from the Wicked Sister on Ashman Street. We also have our good friend Dave McKegg in Sioux, Ontario. He does a version of The Game sports show from Boston Pizza and Sports Center Bar and Grill. Talking a lot of hockey along with Sioux Ontario sports. We also put up our high school basketball broadcasts. Lots of information on that podcast page, and you can hear it at thegamesportshow.podbean.com. Once again, thegamesportshow.podbean.com. So if you're an Eagles parent, maybe you want to keep a, a audio for the archives, if you will. You can download it, save it to a jump drive, and... You know, hey, listen to it 15, 20 years down the road when maybe your grandparents and these guys are having kids. Yeah. Down the road, mind you. Down the road. Down the road. This year. Now that's Podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, brand new uh, podcast page. We we made some upgrades there because we have a lot of local sports content. Now literally we're having about, about six or seven different shows a week. So it's something that we've created over the past couple years. And there's good news, Larry, as Blair is up. And I know that Grandpa Blair is here, and right. Tom Blair's watching back at home. Looks like he's favoring. I thought it was the leg. The knee or something. Yeah, like he came down really hard. Now, what are you going to do this summer when you're, you're umpiring ball again? Or uh, Yes, I am. Know? So how are you going to gonna, you gonna have a little uh, microphone with you and uh, broadcast that? <laughs> and, and you know, I've always <laughs> thought of that. It's like, you know, I could be the first ever umpire broadcast play-by-play -play guy. Think that was a good call, Jim? Absolutely, I do. <laughs> Darn right that was a strike. I don't want to hear anything of it. it. It's nothing until you call it. That's right. That's right. Now I already have my schedule. It's kind of hard to think about baseball and softball schedules, but the there is a severe shortage here locally of high school officials, Larry, not just in baseball and softball, but in all sports. A lot of the officials that have done it for a while are getting to that age where they can't do it anymore. Right. And there's not a lot of young guys coming up because a lot of people don't want to deal with it. Oh, because uh, every time you make a call, 50% yeah. of the people are yes and 50 and, are saying no. So. And, I'll, and I'll say this, it's worse at the lower levels. For the guys just starting in the middle school level, Those that it's way yeah, worse yeah, at yeah, varsity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so you, 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 you got to learn not to hear things when you're yeah, an official. Some people are sensitive these days. Ask yeah. your prime minister. Can't say mankind anymore, apparently, according to that guy. Costa with it. We have a tale of two leaders in our countries, don't we, boy? We do. We got polar opposites. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah. Don't care what side of the fence you, you fall on. It's uh, <laughs> You're in trouble. A little different leadership styles between the two. Jake Palmerio, 10-minute misconduct, unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh. 
The time of the penalty, 16-51. So Paul Mario gets a 10-minute misconduct. I missed that, Larry. I know you were looking down there. Now a shot that goes wide. 12-25 to play here in this third period. Eagles lead by the score of 6-1. to one. They will climb within four points of the Thunderbirds that they hand to win, and Blind River is winning, so they'll bump into first place in the West. Now Blind River has played three more games than the Eagles and Thunderbirds, but they're still in first, and you have games in hand, you still got to win those games. Now the Eagles with the puck, Butcher, trying to get it to Rowe, going for four. Rowe with it, couldn't quite get a shot. Good job by Lawrence on the back check. Now here come the T-Birds, 12 minutes to play. Robbins across the blue line. Robbins with it. Robbins shot, that deflected. That, wow. I thought it was going in a corner. It went in the other corner, not the net. Yeah, the only goal for the Thunderbirds was kind of a wild deflection as well. Yes. Now that shot goes in. Behind the net, picked up by Caruso. Caruso with it to Miller, 11.30 to play here in the third period. Tassone across the blue line. Had it poke checked away. Now behind the net to Schwab. Schwab up to Quinn. Taken away by the Thunderbirds. Quinn with it. That center ice, Miller. Miller had it taken away. Thunderbirds with it. That's offside delay. Capasiolto dumps it into the T-Bird zone. 11 minutes to play in this third period. These teams will meet tomorrow night at the John Rhodes Community Center. Should look at some of the other games going on tomorrow night. The NOJHL. Clearing their zone at center ice. And Eagles pick it up and throw it back in. Now and we're going to have a penalty, Larry, as... Smith is going to get one, I yeah, believe. Butterson the... got hit over on the far side. The game is over in Espanola. Blind River has won. So the Beavers right now in first place in the West Division with 64 points. And if the Thunderbirds... Cross-checking penalty to Smith for the Thunderbirds. So the Eagles will go on their first power play. So the Thunderbirds, if they lose this one, will be in second place. Other games tomorrow involving West Division opponents. Race side is at Espanola. So you would expect them to win that one. And Elliott Lake is at Blind River. That one is no gimme for Blind River. Sunday, Rayside Balfour will be at home to Hurst. So really, they're the team that could really get a lot of points this weekend. Eagles win this face off. Nick Smith, two minutes, cross-checking. The time of the penalty, 9.20. So Smith gets two for cross-checking. Eagles on their first power play of the night, leading 6-1. to one. Tharleton at the far point over to Clark. Clark over to Tharleton off of his skate. Now Tharleton falls down. Thunderbirds can't clear it though. Good recovery by Tharleton to keep it in. Tackle with it. Tackle to Clark. Clark off the boards to tackle. Tackle over to Vitale. Now back to tackle. Goes over his stick and down the ice. Halfway through this third period, a minute 15 left on the Eagles' first power play of the night. Tackle with it. Dumps it into the T-Bird zone. Chased down by Caruso. Caruso. Thunderbirds scored first in this game, but the Eagles have scored six straight. Buckle on the near boards. One minute left on the power play. Now back to the point, Butcher. Butcher over to Tackle. Tackle moves in. Tackle with a shot. Hits the goaltender, Gordon. He'll make the save. Get a different unit out there. The... Eagles had control of the puck. They're moving it around just a little too much, and it backfired on them. They had to start all over again when the puck went all the way down the ice. So now we got the second unit out there, and we'll see who, uh, who we got. We got Rowe, Saxton, Butcher, Capsialto, and Casey. Casey. 9.31 to play in this third period. 6-1 Eagles. Saxton will take the draw. Oh, and We got our timeout. Uh, can you do that during the, can't do that during the power during play. During the power though. play, yeah. That, uh, I guess Lance Brown there was uh, telling them to time out, but there's not. Yeah, can't do that during the power play. So the next whistle after the power play, or if a goal is scored, there will be a TV timeout. Rowe with it. He has three goals tonight. Now Rowe fighting for that puck. Shot back to center by Butcher. Butcher over to Schultz. Or Schultz. Did that. <laughs> so like Casey? Blind River. Casey, yeah. Schultz was last year. Now Casey with it. Across the blue line. Casey. With the puck. Plays it off the boards, and well, that one didn't work as that goes down the ice. That was Rowe's position, I think. Or, yeah. Nobody was there for him. 
15 seconds left on the Eagles power play. Saxton's pass off the boards to Rowe. Rowe with the puck over to Casey. Casey to Rowe. Over to Butcher. That's going to pretty much do it for the power play. Butcher shot deflect in front by Rowe. Save, rebound. There and it is. a goal! Was that Rowe again? No. 17. Was that, no, it can't be. It might, it might have been. I think it was Rowe on the near side. That's Rowe. That's it is him, yeah. Fourth goal of the season after coming into this game scoring two goals all year. Well, you never now, know what you're going to see at the polar, Larry. Now, I don't know if that's, that was a power play goal or not because I heard Bob saying the no, full th- strength. I'm so I pretty don't... sure it was not a power play goal, Larry. We'll check there on the official score, but I thought the penalty had just expired. Uh, I thought so, too. So it looks like Austin Rowe is going to get his fourth goal of the night. Might want to retire that stick. No, keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Eagle goal scored by number 26. Oh, it didn't oh. get it. William Casey. But Casey got the goal. I thought Rowe maybe got that one. Assist number 12, Austin Rowe. And number three, Jake Saxton. So Saxton with three assists, Rowe with four points. And Casey with his first goal of the night at 7-1. to one. Now we have an offside. And we should have a TV immediate timeout, Larry. Yeah. With 8-12 to play in the third period. And so now's a great time to tell us about some of our fantastic Sioux Eagle sponsors. Yeah, we have a few of them left here. Well, I think think you're right. Uh, Subways, there you go. Neville Superette, that's a place you used to work. I did. MR Auto Body, Kiwi and Casinos, and Ford Sioux Motors. And I think I got a couple on the other side. Yeah, Buffalo Wild Wings, Wicked Sisters, uh, you're working out of there. I do. I mentioned, oh, the Palace Saloon. Yep. I still have to use my $10 gift <laughs> card there. Yes, you do. <laughs> I, my wife and I were there last week. We tried forgot to forgot the gift no, card. No, I had it. place was packed. Oh, yeah. yeah 20 minute wait. And I said, no, I'm not waiting yeah, 20 minutes for, for this $10 yeah. card. Yeah. <laughs> Killing me, Larry. <laughs> well, I'm begging hard for your son to replace me. You know that, <laughs> That's eh? That's true. Gee, there's, I, there's, he's got to wait till he's drinking age. Well, <laughs> There, there is a movement afoot, Larry, on that. I can tell you the the, uh, the Twitter universe is getting fired up about you being replaced, I must say. Now, you have your share. You, you never, what, how's that song go? You don't know what you you, you had till it's gone? Um, don't Put up a parking get... lot? Put oh, up, wow, yeah, you're yeah. going Joni Mitchell yeah, on me. Yeah, wow. you don't know what you had until it's gone. So we're talking about putting up malls or something? No, I'm just saying you don't know what you had until it's <laughs> <Well>. gone. <laughs> I'm Put sure up a parking lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're putting up something tonight, Larry. <laughs> Penalty on the board for the Thunderbirds. 7-1 in favor of the Eagles. So the Eagles will get two key points tonight. Going to climb a little closer to Rayside, who is idle tonight. They'll be three points behind them, four points behind the Thunderbirds, five points behind the Beavers, who are now in first place, assuming this one stays as it is. So Acosta gets a cross-taking penalty, a shot in front. Oh, oh what big a save. save. Tackle was wide open. Now Tackle gets it back. Trying to get it to Barterson. Now back to the point. Here come the Thunderbirds, Tassone. Tassone over on the far side. Shot saved there by McPhail. Now Vitale with it. Minute 30 left on the power play. Back in the neutral zone. Clark over to Tharaldson. Tharaldson back to... Clark, who shoots it in. Puck over to Tekel. Tekel and Caruso. Vitali over there as well. Back to Clark. Clark on the near side. Tekel almost fell down. Gets it to Rowe. Back to Barterson. Barty with the shot. That goes wide. Kalisti tried to pick it up. Now Tassone backhands it down the ice. And we there we go. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And so yeah, that's going to yeah. be a five on three as. Coach Parko not happy about yeah, that call. Yeah, yeah, that was a tripping behind the plate. That was an unnecessary penalty that uh, Kalisti picked up. It wasn't called for. He picked up a tripping penalty. So they're getting one for the Eagles as well. Wow. As that's going to be Gianni <laughs> Vitale. I didn't see what happened I there, didn't Larry. See, I... So that's going to wow. keep it a five on four, I would assume. You know, in the OH, OHL, they don't run. Can it, can, Coincidental penalties. 
What do you mean? Well, if there's two guys get it off, it's instead of going five on five, they go four on four. Oh, okay. I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. The old so days this would there. be a this would be a four on three situation. And, and didn't, didn't they get rid of that in the NHL because of the Marty McSorleys and such uh, that would intentionally get penalties to make it four on four for Gretzky and Edmonton? I believe that's why. Maybe not. Did Edmonton used to like get intentional penalties and try to draw people so Gretzky would have more space? Well, Wayne Gretzky played yeah. for Edmonton. Yes, yeah, so I More understand what you're saying, but I'm trying to figure why McSorley would want to well, get I mean, a penalty. He, he was just one of the. He's, he was he was playing with Gretzky. Well, no, I'm just saying that maybe not McSorley, but one of the other guys. Well, there you threw me off. Well, okay. You threw me off. Well, he was. You can't even say he, Smith. Smith he, played with Edmonton also. No, but they would get no, but they would try to get penalties on the other team to make it four on four. They try to goat somebody into yeah. like a two, you know a penalty. And they wouldn't mind getting one themselves. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, well, butcher. <laughs> That's way before my time, mind you. Now Rowe tried to put it in front. Shot on goal. Save. There by Gordon. Over to Casey. 6.20 to play here in this third period. Rowe, edge of the far circle. Rowe, behind the net to Saxton. Seven points combined for those two. Now Capasiolto up to Butcher. Butcher. Pass high. Goes to Capasiolto. Back to Butcher, over to Saxton. Saxton shot, nice little snap shot there. Save Gordon. That'll do it for the penalty. Under six minutes to play, another shot. Hits a Thunderbirds player in front. That's Caruso. Caruso across the blue line, over to Acosta. Acosta's shot goes behind the net. Picked up by the T-Birds, now Butcher has it. Butcher in the far corner, avoids the hit. Mikey Butcher puts it behind the net. Now Acosta centering, chance a shot, a big save. There by Carter McPhail showing the fancy glove work, yes, Larry. Yes, he says, look at this down here. My goodness sakes. And I'll tell you, you know, 18 shots, Larry, but I'd say half of those were really good scoring opportunities. He's, he's on tonight. He's, he's on. Yes. Like I say, that first one was a deflection. He had no chance at it. He's, he's playing very good. A big save there is. He's had help from his team also, he but he's, he's, he's made some big saves. Could be a very different game. Number 12. Yeah, see, Rowe did get it, Larry. Austin we've, Rowe. We've been uh, right on all those. Number 26, William Casey. And number four, Mikey Butcher. The time of that goal. So Rowe from Casey and Butcher. So, Larry, that's twice we thought Rowe got the goal. They had to <laughs> double-check things before they agreed with us. Maybe we should no. be mic'd into Bob. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Come up here charging at us. <laughs> Now Miller with the puck, he gets knocked down. Uh, no, no, no call. No call. T-Bird's with it. Miller, Miller with the puck. Miller off the boards. Heinrich, Heinrich shot, blocked there by Schwab. Schwab gets it up to her fanals. nice pass over to Quinn. Quinn with the shot, that one deflects off the high glass. Up to Miller. Miller at center ice, he's got Smith with him. Miller with the puck shot, and McPhail makes the save. Speaking of number 13, Larry, Kyle Quinn mentioned that uh, the Quinn family was closest tonight on the attendance guess. They only missed by four, Four? and uh, Linda says that the Quinn family will be here in the Sioux March 2nd through 4th, and they're going to come up and see us. Oh, good. We we encourage those at home, and I think pretty much we've met everybody that's either tweeted, most people. Make sure if you are here for Parents Weekend or the playoffs, come up before the game or even between periods here to the press box. Be careful on the ladder. It's a little dangerous. I don't know if it still clears fire code, but come see us. You can make it. Now Capaziolto's shot. Gordon makes the save, and he'll hold. It might be fire safe, but it's not a head safe. No. no. Or foot safe, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but Please come up and see us as our next home game will be next Friday night, Larry, as the Eagles will take on Rayside Balfour. We'll get to the rest of the schedule. We'll get to the whole remaining schedule here on the next break as the Eagles will be down to just 10 games after this one. Nine games, excuse me. Season's winding down. It is. Hard to believe. We started way back in September. September 19th or something like that. I think earlier than that. Now a big hit there. Didn't quite see who it was. Now it deflects wide. Yeah, remember those 90 degree days that we started there? I believe those were even in October. Yes. A couple of those uh, games where the, <laughs> seems like ancient history where the condensation was dripping from the roof. <laughs> they had to have the, the sponges and the squeegees yeah. doing the plexiglass. Let's look at the remaining schedule, Larry. Tomorrow night the Eagles will be at the roads taking on the 
Thunderbirds, and then they'll be at Elliott Lake on Thursday, February 15th, to take on the Wildcats. Our next broadcast will be a week from tonight, February 16th, against Rayside Balfour. We'll have the Wednesday night game, the 21st of February, here at Polar Stadium, also against Rayside. Friday the 23rd at home against Espinola. We'll get to the rest of the schedule on the next break. So the Eagles are going to have a... We started back, and the season started for us uh, September 2nd. Yeah. And the exhibition game is actually September 1st when we played uh, against the Thunderbirds. Let's look at the rest of the schedule areas. I mentioned two weeks from tonight we'll be here as the Eagles will take on Espinola. They'll be in Espinola on February 24th, a Saturday. They'll be at Blind River Monday, February 26th. And then the final three games of the season, March 2nd, Friday night here at home against Blind River. March 3rd, a Saturday night at home against Elliott Lake. And the Eagles will end the season at the Rhodes, taking on the Sioux Thunderbirds on March 7th. And then, Is that uh, family and uh, uh, billet parents uh, weekend? I believe so. Did yep, I believe because, again, they didn't have a whole lot of two-game home series. No. Not a lot. I think they only had four this all is, year. I think this is three. They didn't even Maybe have even four. Maybe even three, yeah. Now our Fanos has it across the blue line. Thunderbirds player falls down. That's Heinrich. Three minutes to play. Eagles lead 7-1. Shots 38-20, Eagles. Now a chance in front. Robbins just gets nailed there by Thurlson. There we go. Let's see what happens. And he gets right up and just skates yeah. away. It was a good hit. It was right yeah. there. He had his head down. Mom Janet here. She, I'm sure, loved that one. And yeah, again, I don't know what you can get upset about. That was just a clean hit. Referees are having some discussion, Larry, but that looked pretty legal to me. Looks like Terrio's getting a penalty. So now Terrio. Oh, yeah, he's going in. Going to get the penalty. Must have been either something he said or something happened away from the play. Might be an unsportsman. Yeah, they got, there, there's a conference call here now. Roughing. Bobby Price's dad, Jim, will be here for Parents Weekend. As Vicky says, hope he can bring y'all some of this warm Houston weather. Indeed, Vicky, indeed. Well, March, we should be getting there. Well, eh? should. <laughs> should and would, or will, I should say. So that's going to bring the should and could. face off. Uh, is that who I think it is, Larry, in the uh, black f f fedora there? Is that our good friend Richard Manesto walking Where? up the stairs there? Oh, the, yeah, it is. The man in black? Yeah. I haven't seen him for a while. To number 19, Lucas Terrio. Two minutes, roughing. So roughing the call on Terrio. So the Eagles on the power play. They're going to win this game. Get two more points and not move up in the standings, but move closer in the standings to the teams ahead of them. Blind River is already won tonight at Espinola, so they are your new first place team in the West. That can change on a nightly basis now with these teams so close together. Boy, you don't see that very often, Larry. We haven't seen it in the NLJHL where four teams have been so close this late. Might get one or two, but four is pretty unheard of, at least since we've been covering it. Yeah, really. It's it's good hockey, though. It you is. Know? Good coaching, too. Well, we thought it would be this way at the beginning of the season. We looked at these teams, and, well, no surprises, really. Many people thought the Thunderbirds would be down a little bit. I don't think you and I thought that. Oh, well, I did. I, I thought they'd have to rebuild. They did an excellent job in rebuilding. Well, we don't think that now, I should no, say. No, no, yeah. not now. But at the beginning of the season, I was, I'm surprised. But uh, they, they did good uh, with their trades and, and picking up players and their coaching. They did. Clark with the shot that goes wide. 40 seconds left on the power player. Fanos with it. Now back to the point. Die ball over to Clark. Clark with the puck. Gets it over to Tackle. Tackle with the goal, row with four goals tonight. Capasiolto also has a goal. How do you say that? Capasiolto? <laughs> <Don't>, yeah, it's <laughs> easy. <laughs> Banser with the goal. I think I got them all. Who did I miss? Uh, 11. Uh, yeah, you got Banser. Banser, Tackle. 21. Capasiolto. Tackle. Yeah, you yep. got them all. Oh, I got them all. Yeah. I guess when one has four, it makes yeah, it easy yeah, for the other does. three. <laughs> a minute left to play here, so the Eagles... Going to win this game, and the return bout will be at the roads tomorrow night. Want to thank everybody for watching on Hockey TV as Gordon makes the save, and everybody for tweeting, and for those that came up to the booth. Yeah. We'll be back next Friday night, as I mentioned earlier, as the Eagles will take on Rayside Balfour, a team that's given them trouble, Larry. They did win the last game against the Canadians, but they've lost the previous five. 
So they got five, yeah. two more or three more? Two more, two both more? here. That's an odd number, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's uh, five. They're one and five. Okay, six, seven, eight. Yeah. yeah. So the season winding down, and the Eagles still in fourth place as Casey gets a little hit up high. And so we didn't see the nastiness, Larry, that we saw last time these two no. teams met. Much cleaner affair, and I. That's a good thing. And that one cleared down the ice. Want to thank our cameraman tonight, Rob Horn. With our DJ Josh Horn. And got to give kudos to our radio announcer, Bill Crawford over here, helping us, giving us some information before the broadcast. We do appreciate that. We passed on information. I passed information on him too. Ten seconds to play, Larry. The Eagles are going to win this game. A big win at Puller Stadium as they will defeat the Sioux Thunderbirds by the score of 7-1. to one. That's going to do it for the Puller. We'll talk to you next Friday night here on Hockey TV. Good night, folks.